Right, so you own a Citroen XM, this is what you see. You see yourself looking like a king. So does the XM actually uh, match the expectations that I've put upon it? All the clicks. Oh, parking brake off. And we're away. I'm trying to think back to the first time I drove it because I know, you know, shock horror, this isn't actually the first time I've driven this car. Um, and the first time I drove it, the first thing I noticed, and it's going to be a cliche, it's going to be everyone's going to, oh yeah, it's you know, the most simple thing you could come up with. You can't come up with something original. But it is what stood out. Well, actually, no. The thing that really stood out when I first got in the car was this view. It, the visibility is absolutely brilliant. Um, but, you know, the mirrors are great. The, the visibility backwards is good. The visibility forwards is, is insane. I mean, there's normally, most cars, there's normally a pillar there. But it's not. It's so far back. It's over here. You can just see. It's like watching TV, you know, watching your favourite film on a, on a bigger TV than you used to. And it's just the dashboard. None of it encroaches. None of it is in your face. It's all away from you. But it's not out of reach. Everything is, is within reach. It's really well laid out. But the first thing I noticed when I drove the car, it was the suspension. I'm sorry. I know it's a cliche. I know it's very predictable. But it was. It was the suspension. Um, the reason I noticed the suspension, and it's not because it's, you know, just say it's comfortable, because they all are, aren't they? Most, most hydropneumatic Citroens are. It was because this particular car, I mean, we've got some horrible speed bumps around our estate. This car rode those speed bumps better than any other Hydro Citroen I've driven. This car does handle sharp ridges and speed bumps and horrible stuff like that better than any other. And I'll include the C6 in that, and BXs and everything like that. It, it really does. Um, I, it was a bit of a surprise. I wasn't expecting it because the architecture under this car is kind of basic. It's not, you know, like if you look at the C6, what was that? Car spotting time, Caterham. Um, if you look at the C6, that's got a uh, double wishbone effectively at the front, but it's even more complicated than that. It's got a floating knuckle. So it doesn't get the steering and suspension are almost completely separate. Um, one doesn't have to do the other. It gets rid of torque steer and it should, you know, improve the ride and everything like that. This, by comparison, is more like a big BX. It's just trailing arms at the back with arm, arms on bearings like a BX and McPherson struts on the front. That's it. So it shouldn't really hold a candle to cars like CXs or anything like that or, you know, GS. I've not driven a GS or a DS, so I can't compare those, but I've driven the CX, obviously. Oh, is that an Avora? It was. But yeah, comparing it to cars of its time and other Citroens that followed, I was quite surprised how well this thing, well, how well it rides, to be honest. Is he letting me go? Very kind. He could just speed up a bit. I oh, know he's not letting me go. Um, yeah, the, the suspension is quite impressive it's not as smooth in, in other ways they've all got their little strengths and weaknesses hydro citrons they've got their kind of some of them are slightly better at certain elements and then others are slightly better at others but when it comes to speed bumps and eyeing in it ironing, <laughs> easy for me to say ironing out um sort of quite nasty bumps this is king i've not driven another citron that does it as well as this it, it, it really speed bumps you just fit you, you just you hear it you sense the impact but you don't actually get jolted up and down now this is the road i was on when i was in that cx and that bridge caught the cx out not so in this at all cx got caught out horribly on little crests like that but yeah this car is more like a bx in the way it deals with undulations and things uh, a little bit more pitch and, you know, pitch and dive on bumps uh, in this compared to a BX. I think BXs kind of have that nailed. There we go. This is a horrible bump. Oh, for God's sake. Honestly. 
that's ridiculous. That's a horrible bump. That has a TVR on its bump stops. Oh. Wow, okay. So going back to the suspension, um, before anyone jumps in the comments to shout and scream, it is the same as a BX in many ways, very similar to a BX. Not quite the same with the anti-dive geometry, and I think the anti-dive geometry on the BX is, I mean, it's perfect on the BX. Um, am I gonna get hit by a tractor? No. The, uh, the anti-dive in this, not quite as good. It's not bad, certainly not as bad as a Zantia, but it's, it's, it's not as good. But what this car does have is a party trick. And that is that it is a computer control. So it's not electronic. It's it kind of semi-electronic mechanical. It's not fully electronic, but it's basically the same system a BX has, but it has a brain in the suspension as well. The, the BX, the CX, the GS, everything before it um, has a basic, uh, yeah, basic hydraulic system. It's all done by pressures, valves. It's just the principles of hydraulic flow and, and gas. That's how it works. So everything it can do, every party trick it's got is just mechanical. And what this car has is the first car that had Citroen's hydractive system. And hydractive basically means they've given the suspension a brain. So it's still LHM based, it's still hydraulic, it's still a hydraulic pump with all the pipes and everything like that. It has no party tricks per se, in the same way that perhaps a um, C6 does. But at the time, this was pretty clever stuff. And uh, what it basically has is a brain and an extra set of valves. And on each wheel, you have a wheel sphere, which is like your spring and damper in one. But on the hydractive car, it has a, a third one in the middle. So the easiest way to imagine it is you've got a coil spring on each corner, but in the middle of those two coil springs, you've got another coil spring, which allows those coil springs to, to spring. So it's like a third spring. Now it's kind of backwards because with coil springs, the more springs you have, the stiffer it gets. In these, the more spheres you have, the softer it gets because you've got more gas to compress. Um, so when you've got it on automatic mode like it is now, and there's a little slidey switch down here, when you've got an automatic mode, it will basically, primarily, it will drive around on the three spheres. So it's softer, you've got an extra cushion in the middle. When you put it into sport mode, which there's no point doing here because I've picked the worst bit of road to talk about it, um, it, it isolates that middle one, it cuts it out. Um, I don't know if it cuts it out entirely, I think it does. I think, it, I, I think it's an override and it just gets rid of it. But when it's in automatic mode like now, which is your, your normal mode, it regulates that sphere itself. So it, it decides what kind of road, you, you know, it senses how fast you're going, what your throttle input is, what kind of bumps it's having to deal with, and then it, it figures it out from there. So if you're hooning it around, it thinks, right, you're giving it some welly. I think you want some more, or some slightly stiffer springing. So I'm gonna cut this sphere out a little bit in the middle. Whereas when you put it in sport mode, it just stiffens it. Um, this road here will work well for that. This is the same test route I did in the CX. It's gonna be my new Citroen test route. It's an absolutely glorious day as well. It really is. So you got another little crest here. Yeah, I didn't even notice it going underneath the old Mion Valley Railway here. Oh, that was a bit of a bump. That's where uh, D-Day planning was done. Churchill, Eisen, is it Eisenhower, Roosevelt? I'm not sure, they were all up there in, a, in the station. Actually, they weren't in the station, they were in a siding up there and a cutting hidden. Yeah, we've got a bit of a lack of power, I would say. I'll get onto that. Um, so yeah. Basically, the sport mode gives you sportier suspension. So people go, oh, what's the point of having sporty suspension in a car like this? It, no, don't think of it like that. Think of it like it just, it changes the reactions. So if you put it on now, a little light comes on up in the corner there, and the screen tells me I'm in sports mode. It won't suddenly turn into a sports car. It's not like that. That's not the thing. 
it basically means if you need to hoon the steering a bit more around a, around a corner with bumps in it, it just gives you a little bit more stability. It takes the floatiness out a little bit. And it does that in the C6 as well. It, uh, it, it just removes a little bit of float and just gives you a little bit more torque feeling um, suspension. You can feel it. It's subtle, not massively different. It's because it's not a massively bumpy road to be fair, but it just makes very, very light work of this. Now this crest down here really caught the CX out. So I'm putting it back in wafty mode for this to see what happens. The CX did not like this. Oh, no, it's much easier. Much easier. So let's put it back in sport. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a slight difference. It's just the mapping of how it all works. And by cutting out that center sphere, the wheel spheres are still the same. They're, they're still the same pressure. They're still the same softness. It's just it hasn't got that third one in the middle. And this is a big car. It's not a very heavy car. It's deceptive. It's, I think it's only about 1,300 kilos for the size of it. But yeah, you can hustle it along quite nicely. You compare this to what else would have been around at the time. So let's go back into lolloping mode. But when it comes to progress, Mayor Red Thomas, this is his middle name. Um, no, when it comes to progress, that's where this car does have a slight Achilles heel, a slight problem. The engine, I mean, it's very much like that CX. It's not the same engine at all, it's totally different, but the character of it, very much like the CX. It's not a rever, it's not sweet, it's just an engine. It's very, it's kind of agriculture again. I don't remember that from when I was a kid, but then, yeah, I probably wouldn't have noticed. It's the uh, the XU engine, so it's a two litre, eight valve, naturally aspirated, about 120, I think it's 122 horsepower, if I remember rightly from when I was a kid. Yeah, it's no ball of fire, you know. Yeah, when I was a kid, I thought two litre injection, that's amazing, my dad's got a two litre injection car. But you kind of realise that it's not actually all that. And of course, this was this, I mean, in Europe, I think you could get a two litre carb um, FedEx. Can we make that? Yeah, we can make that. Yeah, it was, uh, I think you could get a carb version of this engine, which would be horrible um, in France and Europe and whatnot. But in this country, it was the two litre injection. They later turbocharged it with a small, uh, low, pr low pressure turbo. Okay, we're going in there, thank you. I think they only gave that 130 odd horsepower to start with and it was more about the torque. Oh, there's no old men looking today. Later models had 150. It still wasn't a ball of fire. I mean, I've driven one of those briefly. I don't really remember much of it, but it was the same as this, just with a bit more shove, which to be fair is what this needs. You could, of course, get the turbo diesels and I can see why people bought those. I wouldn't want a turbo diesel version, if I'm honest, because I think that would, I mean, this is a bit agricultural. What would a turbo diesel be like? I know the 2.1 wasn't a bad engine. It's quite a smooth engine, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'd want that. Um, and then of course you could get the V6s. That's what I'd want. Not for power, just for smoothness. That would suit this car more. Smooth. And the best one they did and the, the uh, Dream XM for me is the V6 24 valve. Um, the, not to be confused with the later V6 24 valve, they did two. One of them had the ES9 engine in it, which is the same as the Xantia and the uh, Peugeot 406 and the Renault Clio V6, believe it or not. But the earlier XM had the PRV, the 90 degree V6, and that, they did a, a 12 valve, which was about 170 horsepower. Um, and they did a 24 valve with single cam heads. So that was a bit of a mess, as you can imagine, but it had 200 horsepower. It could do 140, 140, 145, not to 60 and seven and a half. And if you've got a left-hand drive one, you got Duravi steering. Now we don't get that because we're peasants and we're stuck with normal power assisted steering. But in France, you've got Duravi steering or in any left-hand drive market. Um, they were manual only, those cars. 
all the body trim was body colour. They had their own set of wheels, which later got put on all different XMs, but yeah, they were manual only. So if you see an early Mark 1 XM and it's a V6, but it's an auto, it's a 12 valve, which they still sound quite nice, but yeah, I really want the V6 24 valve, but they're, they're rare. So the suspension is really composed. Yeah, the engine's a bit agricultural. In this car, it's, it is hampered by the gearbox because it's got an auto gearbox. And I'm not against auto gearboxes and the right applications. Um, a wafty barge is the right application for an auto gearbox. I think an SM is a good application for an auto Did I mention I've got an SM? Yeah, I think an auto box works well in, in a car like this. Um, with this engine, it's, it might work better with a diesel. I think it probably would. Auto boxes and diesels do go well together, I think. But yeah, this is a bit of a struggle. You have to mash your foot down if you want to make progress. So the best thing is just to sit back and waft. Um, it's uh, a bit of a thump at the back, I'm feeling, over certain bumps. So I think it might have a, a rear subframe bush out. Um, I did notice the rear wheel uh, camber on the rear wheels looked a little extreme so i think it might have a rear arm bearing on the way out that's a horrible crest as is this one i nearly put an ldv convoy into that ditch once oh oh that's the worst one you actually felt the stuff in the boot bounce again see i don't think a bx is as bad over that i'm gonna have to go and get the bx out and drag that over it i don't think the bx is as bad as that this struggled that's a horrible unless that bump's got worse maybe it's getting worse maybe it's sinking but yeah, that did not like that. Yeah, the visibility is excellent. What's the power like? Well, that's flat out. And it's down quite an agreeable hill, so... it's Yeah, it doesn't really... Again, it's the same as the CX. It's not really a consideration. You don't think about how fast it is, because it's not... If you want to go fast you wouldn't buy this. I mean, this is good. If you want to go fast point to point, I think you can. I think you can get a fair bit of speed up in this, down windy lanes, and, and keep it going and make good progress. Um, but I don't think straight line like acceleration is uh, what it's about. It's definitely not what it's about. It's just the engine is a means to make the car go. The brakes are... The, I don't like the feel of the pedal compared to a BX or a CX. They've got that nice hard pedal. This one's a little bit like, pedal feels like it's a bit springier. It's, it needs less force on it, which I don't like. Oh my God. Oh dear. I'm gonna get destroyed by Clarkson. I know we're all right. I watched that and yeah, I know a bit more about farming now. Yeah, the brakes, I mean, they're, they're decent. They're powerful, because obviously they're fully powered brakes. Um, just don't like the feel quite as much, but that might be because you can't dip the clutch when you push the brakes. You're relying on the gearbox, and this gearbox doesn't back off. In the C C6, if you take your foot off, it just coasts. Um, this doesn't. It kind of tries to engine brake. That is a bit of a pain when you're braking, because you kind of, it feels like it's trying to slow the engine down as well. Maybe we should have a look under the bonnet. Now to look under the bonnet, you need to release the bonnet, which you can't do from here. You have to go to the passenger side, which in France would be the driver's side. It's down there, but they don't move it because we're wrong. Screw the English. Gas struts, which are, there we go. So yeah, there is an engine. You can't really see much. You've got ECU gubbins under here, uh, header tank, spheres, obviously. The third one is down the bottom on the subframe. But, I mean, look at the room on the front of the engine there. It's like this, because, obviously, it's designed to take a 90-degree V6. Air filter here is your LHM tank. Um, yeah, it's pretty conventional, really, for Citroen standards, but, obviously, there's a lot more electronics in it. This is the suspension pump here. This car has a flow diverter valve, I believe, for the steering. I think it does. Yeah, there's the flow diverter valve down there. So um, I've done the fuel hoses, so I've 
renewed these and put a, another one in there um change those and uh yeah it's kind of that is what it is xu engine so it's basically um architecture is the same as the bx peugeot 205 gti but these have an iron block i think a two liter yes but there's probably lots of funky things that to um firsts on this car i mean look at the condition of it he's really looked after it well fella who owns this he painted it in his garage at home whole car I mean, if you know, if you paid a body shop for this and you scrutinised it, you'd be annoyed. But when he told me that he did it, <laughs> that's insane. That really is, it really is impressive. As I said, does he want to do an SM? Speaking of the SM, I think certain Citroëns tend to follow, take inspiration from other Citroëns that came before. And for me, this one, XM and SM, that seems very similar. That I think there's more to it. I don't think that's accidental. I see a lot of SM in this car. I mean, this is very SM. The angle that that is at is very SM. This kink here, an SM's rear window, is kind of there. At the back, SM again, this is very SM. These lights along here and then that kind of horn there and there on an SM, that's the stainless bumper. I think there's a lot of SM in this car. The shape of that front arch, I see SM in that because you've got this line, either that one there that goes all the way across or even that panel, the way that panel does that, but that kind of nose and that point is very SM, as are the little indicators at the bottom there because that's actually a side light and those are unobtainable now. So if you lose these, you're in trouble. Um, yeah, the indicators are actually that one. That's a fog light, main beam, I think. Normal headlight, or maybe the other way around, inside like that. Um, you can imagine the headlamps in an SM, uh, in an XM, sorry, aren't amazing, because they're kind of like letterboxes. Um, people do try and modify the wiring. Um, because I've parked stupidly, you might not be able to see it. But uh, down here, Lots of little multi-plug connectors for the earths. These were positioned in um, areas on the early cars that corroded, which means you had earth, earths that corroded there, which caused short circuits in other circuits, and that caused all manner of problems, and that's why XMs had a reputation for electrical issues. But basically, all you do is go around and sort all your earths out, clean them all, grease them, a bit of Vaseline, and you're away. But yeah. It's just so cool. I love the way the carpet goes up the side of the centre console there. Oh no. I want one now. I hate it when that happens. I end up driving one and then I want one. It's lovely. The thing is, what would I do with it? I've got BXs. Would I have it over a BX? Hmm. I don't really compare it to a BX. It's a different car for a different job, isn't it? I would love one. And if I had a space for a lot of cars and a big collection, and people would say, well, you have got a lot of cars. Yes, I have. But I'm talking tons and tons and tons of cars. Um, then I'd definitely have an XM. 100% I'd have an XM in it. But I don't know if I'd have one over, I don't know if I'd have one over a BX. I think I might have to tick it off the list just to have one but yeah see I'm losing speed here so the gearbox in this I'm not sure who makes it um, uh, my friend Chris uh, who runs a channel called Adventures in Rust you should watch it it's good um, he dicks about with BX's and buses as you do he knows all about the auto boxes and he'd tell me which one this is now, I think it's a 4 HP I think, I don't know. It's not, it's a bit agricultural, but then you're comparing it to modern boxes, you know, I think in, in, its, in its day, it was probably acceptable. It's a little bit, you know, it's kind of, all oh, look, pheasants. They're shaking their, why would you think about running into the side of the car? It literally turned and started running at the car in the last second. It started shaking its tail. Is it like, is that a territory thing? Because if it has picked a fight with this, I know these aren't built amazingly well, but 
a pheasant's going to lose. But yeah, I think I don't know what gearbox this is. I think it's a four HP. It's a four speed. Yeah, it's just yeah. I'm I am I'm not trying to be disparaging. I am I am reading about how auto gearboxes work because I actually think that I've overlooked something that is incredibly impressive. I think actually how they work is really quite special. Um, very 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 clever. So I am looking into them more, and I am going to learn more, and I and I need to because I'm sure mine's broken in the SM. Oh, a Maestro. Yeah, I think they're very very clever, and I'm sure this one, you know, for its time. I mean, I've had, I had a BX automatic once. That was awful. The gearbox just wasn't. I mean, it's, you can imagine a two litre struggling with this. What about a one point six? That wasn't running particularly well. Go on then. I tell you, it's 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 perfectly acceptable. One thing I noticed: the road noise is there is a fair bit, but then again, I'm you know this is an old car now. This car is 30 years old, and there's a few light trim rattles and things like that, but nothing major at all. It's pretty well put together and this is done a hundred thousand miles this isn't a garage queen i know that's not a huge amount of miles you know there's xms out there that will have done three times that but yeah it's built well it's worn very well the seats are in fantastic condition i prefer this to leather i've missed seats like this speaking of the seats the, and i gave my uh, one of my kids uh, to uh, the lift to school this morning and he remarked on it as well completely unprompted um they're quite firm Seats in the front of this are quite firm. The seats in the front of this are firmer than the C6. But then my C6 is leggy. So maybe they're softened. But yeah, they're um, in this car, they're, they're quite firm. They're comfortable enough. So there's a little bit of that still. I mean, that's what the C6 is quite bad at that. Um, and the C5 wasn't great. And this car does, there is a bit. There is a bit, but I'm scrutinising the hydraulics a lot more than I, I used to. Back in the old days, I'd just drive it and go, that was really smooth. Now I'm like obsessing over the little individual characteristics and traits. Um, but the, uh, yeah, this is a bit like that compared to a BX. But then there are other things this does better than a BX. These sharp ridges like that, the BX would have, you'd have felt that. This is unbelievable Adam it really is this is the speed bump king this it's not a head turner but I have been looking at the corner of my eye and I'm not I don't like people looking but I'm always intrigued to see how people react to a car um, itself and it's not a head turner people aren't I think it's white isn't it so it's white and it's got black plastic trim it was that time of car design was quite toned down quite toned down in here as well there's no fake wood which i actually prefer it's just black plastic everywhere um you know we've got more exotic materials now the c6 feels more at market which is of course i say the c6 because it's the car that replaced this albeit six years after or five years late but yeah this era of cars it was just lots of a sea of plastic so this is kind of typical of the um of the of the era and the xm was designed i think it was launched 89 so it's a late 80s design, 87, 88 would have been when it was finalised. I actually, I'll tell you what, I actually get a, a bit of a Japanese vibe in it. More than other Citroëns. The way the dash kind of wraps into the door cards a bit and the, the kind of the look of everything. Some of the controls. A bit of a Japanese vibe and that's not a bad thing. It's, the Japanese, they know how to make cars. Even if they're not the most exciting. Oh, it was a Chinook. Um, yeah, even if they're not the most exciting cars, just to, like that Honda, not particularly exciting, but it's good. They're, they're good cars. Oh, it did the rev dropped off then. Probably find that I was driving around with it in that third gear lockout. Yeah, so the gear, yeah, the gearbox isn't. 
the best thing for it. It's not amazingly matched. It kind of, the way it changes gear is a bit uncouth. Sometimes it changes gear when you're in the middle of a power band, you know. I mean, well, not when you're in the middle. I'm not following, sorry, I'm going off topic here. Following a Chinook, which is a, a flying and you're up on a hill and you're watching it fly over. Can you see that? That's brilliant. That's so cool. Where have I been when I did that? Where have I been when I was up high? It's not the, not the Mac Loop, but I've, I haven't seen planes in the Mac Loop. Oh, I'm pretty much at the same height as it now. That's so cool. Sorry, kind of waylaid there. I completely forgotten about the subject. Car. XM. Car of the year, 1989, I think. European car of the year. And the other thing is Ronin. You drive this car, it's like I am in Ronin. And you haven't seen Ronin, you need to see Ronin. And then you'll know. The only thing that annoys me about Ronin is why, with all the people and all the filming and everything like that, and all the production, why did they not have two identical... Oh, I get that they have to use more than one car in the car chase scene with the XM, but one of them was a Mark One, one of them was a Mark Two. They were totally different. I was like, oh, come on, you keep switching between them. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a good film. Oh, as I say, quite taken with this one. Um, a lovely machine. If you're thinking about it, what what would you get if you bought an XM? You'd get uh, something technical. Not, it's not outrageously complicated or technical. You know, don't forget a lot of people. Well, you have to have balls of steel to buy a car like that. No, you don't, because. All these cars, this is 30 years old. People have figured out DIY fixes for everything on their driveways. So this is pre-computer, you know, OBD diagnostics and CAN bus and everything like that. It's really not that complicated. There's a little funny uh, trait with these. When you open the door, you hear a click if the car has been parked up a certain amount of time. That is the car going into sport mode when the engine's off. Why does it do that, you might ask? Because if it's in sport mode, and then you get in it, the car won't sink as much. So it won't have to pump itself up as much. It's clever. So you know if your sport mode's working or not when you open the door. If you don't hear the click, Zant ears do that as well. Zant ears had Hydractive 2, which was just uh, an evolution of this system. Now, I think there was something to do with Hydractive. It was like something like Hydractive isolates the third sphere totally. Hydractive 2 doesn't, it just changes the mapping. I can't remember. I, know, I, 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 I read it and learned it and forgotten it. So I'm on Hydractive 3 now with the C6, you see. That's totally different. It's a big car, but you know, if you want a classic, a 90s classic or a late 80s classic that you can fit people in comfortably, the build of it is is pretty good. The doors clunk still. Everything feels good. It hasn't worn away. It's only the gear knob in here that's looking a little bit sad. It's quite impressive. And this one is in good condition. The owner keeps this in good condition. So they're not all to me like this. I'm really quite taken with this. So I think I'll probably sign this one off um, because I'm getting back into the rubbish roads now. And... Uh, yeah. Oh, hello. Yes, sorry. I, I was daydreaming there. Um, for some reason, I, I thought I was test driving a Citroen XM um, and I was driving along this road and then the camera battery ran out. Yeah, in, uh, in summary on the XM, uh, it's just gone. Owner's just picked it up. Um, it's just left. And uh, I really like it. I was just discussing there, it's good to talk to fellow Citroen owners, but how sort of capable that car is, you know, but I'm looking at the C6 and I'm thinking, have they really moved on that much from the XM to the C6? There's some things the C6 does much better than the XM, um, but there are some things the XM does much better than the C6, namely the speed bumps I'm about to drive over. Uh, yeah, I think um, that was definitely a win to drive that car and to experience it. And um, it actually brought a lot of memories back that I didn't realize were there. Yeah, that was good. That was good. That was a box ticked. So of this, range of uh drives of cars which are significant to me of which there will be 
10 maybe let's, let's call it 10 we'll make it around 10 um that is one of them ticked off i don't what should i call it pov gold citroen xm two liter si box ticked um bx 16 trs i'll box tick that one because i own one um i've only got another eight cars to find hopefully there'll be more they won't all be citrons there are uh, quite a few citrons um that i'll be driving but um that one is one of the that was one of the big ones to tick off i could have got hold of a v6 or a diesel or something like that but it had to be a two liter si and although that one's a j reg um it was actually built we think around may 1990 so it sat around unregistered for a while and uh, spec wise it is pretty much the same as the one um that i uh i grew up in if you like well i didn't grow up in it we only had 18 months but um 80 000 miles i think piston rings went spewing blue smoke everywhere but yeah so uh, i'm going to stop waffling thanks for watching and uh, i shall see you in another one wherever that is